For this lesson we're going to be looking at the laws of logarithms and to start a discussion of the laws of logarithms we should probably review the laws of exponents because they're actually very similar. Um, they're actually we're going to use the laws of exponents in order to derive some of the laws of logarithms. The laws of logarithms are used in the exact same way as the laws of exponents in the sense that you have various, in this case, exponential expressions, and you can use the exponent laws to change between what are known as equivalent forms. So for example, if I have the same base, you notice on the left side everything has a base of A. For two expressions of the same base, if they're multiplied together, so we have two terms, a to the x multiplied by a to the y, it turns out that you can keep the same base and you just add the exponents. And that's known as the product rule for exponents. Similarly, if I have the same base and I divide, then I could write it also this way, that keeps the same base and then I end up with a subtraction. I get the exponent of the numerator term minus the exponent of the denominator term. If I have a base with a negative exponent, that's the same as 1 over the same base to the positive exponent. And then we start to introduce some restrictions on some of these. We have the power rule or the power law, which is a to the x all raised to the power of y is just the same base a and in this case I take the product of those two exponents. So this is an exponent raised to another exponent that becomes a product. And we've got some other things which I know we've touched upon which is um, as we've been talking about logarithms for example anything raised to the power 0 is equal to 1 unless a is equal to 0 so we restrict this rule a cannot be equal to 0 because 0 to the power 0 is something that's undefined. Uh, people don't know there are a few different definitions on what that might mean. There's certainly not consensus on it. We also have uh, laws of exponents for different bases. So for example if I have a b to the power x then that's the same as a to the x times b to the x and a over b to the power x that's the same as a to the x over b to the x. We're not going to be looking at anything like these for logarithms. We're going to be looking at uh, rules for logarithms where the base is the same. So let's go ahead and start and the way we're going to be starting actually is with some derivations of the um, different laws for logarithms. Now if you're not interested in these derivations you're not going to be responsible for being able to derive them but you do have to be able to use them and understanding where these come from might give you some insight on using them yourself in other ways. But I'll put a link in the description to let you jump ahead to the next part of the video where, um, where I get into some actual working examples. So to do this one, we're starting off with the product rule for exponents. And I just want to stress uh, for students who are looking at this and actually taking an interest in this, in this derivation, you have to understand that a lot of stuff like this comes out of mathematicians. Mathematicians, they were just experimenting. They were trying to come up with different ways to express this. And in this case, they're going to express this by making use of, or they're going to, they're going to come up with an alternate expression for this by making use of this definition of a logarithm. If I have an exponential function y equals a to the x, then x, the inverse, can be written as x equals log to the base a of y. So let's start off with a to the x. I'm going to let m represent a to the x. And using our definition of a logarithm, that means that x is the same as log base a of m. I'm also going to let n equal a to the y, which means that y is equal to log to the base a of n. So I've redefined or I've introduced new definitions. x and y are still there, but now I've redefined things this way. So that means my original equation, a to the x, a to the y equals a to the x plus y. I can rewrite that because a to the x is actually m and a to the y is actually n. 
is equal to a to the x plus y. Now you might wonder, well, why didn't I make this replacement on everything? If I'm going to replace a to the x, why not replace x and y? And I will, I'm just not going to do it just yet. And before I do that, what I wanted to do first is I want to write, I want to write this using my definition. So I'm just going to mark that. Wherever I used a definition of logarithms, I did that here, going from this form, m equals to this. I did that here, and I'm going to do that right now. So that means here's my exponent. That comes down here in front is equal to log base a of, but this is a product, m times n. And now I'm going to make my change. So x is actually the same as log base a of m plus y is actually log base a of n and that is equal to log base a of m times n. And that is actually the product law for logarithms. I have a product, so I'm basically taking the logarithm of a product and what is my result? I end up with a sum of logarithms. And there's a certain symmetry there between this and the power or the product law for exponents. Here, I took the sum of exponentials, or sorry, I had the product of exponentials and I ended up with a sum of exponents. Here, I have the log of a product and I end up with the sum of logarithms. Just as we would with exponential laws, we can do the same thing here to come up with the quotient law. Um, I'm actually, I think, well, you know what, I was going to leave this as an exercise, but some people might want to see this. So it's going to use that same definition. m is equal to a to the x, which means x is equal to log base a of m. n is equal to a to the y, which means y is equal to log base a of n. My original expression, a to the x over a to the y, equals a to the x minus y becomes m over n is equal to a to the x minus y. I'm going to rewrite this using a logarithmic definition which is this y equals a to the x can also be written as x equals log base a of y. In this case here's my exponent which was here is here so I write this as x minus y is equal to log of the base is a m over n and now I'm going to so I made my first substitution which was my m's and my n's and now I'm going to make my second substitution which is x is actually equal to just to remind you x is equal to log base a of m minus y is equal to log base a of n is equal to the log of m over n. And once again, we have one of our laws of logs. In this case, we have the log of a quotient. And over here, we have a difference. of logs, meaning a subtraction of logs. And for the last law of exponents or law of logarithms that we're going to deal with here, we've got a to the x to the power y equals a to the xy. Now this one's a little bit different because I'm actually going to, I'm going to let m be equal to a to the x, but I actually am not going to do anything with the y. So that means x is equal to log the base a of m. Now I go back to my original expression, which is a to the x to the power y is the same as or equivalent to a to the xy. But a to the x I replaced with m. So this is m 
to the power y is equal to a to the xy. I'm going to use my definition, which means I take my exponent and just bring that down. And now I change this to logarithmic form, which is log to the base a of m to the power y. Now I'm going to bring that exponent inside the bracket here. I'm going to use this bracket as the function bracket just to make it clear that this whole thing is what I'm taking the logarithm of. But what is x? Well x is actually log base a of m multiplied by y. This So it's not m times y that's in the logarithm. Logarithm is just of m and then y is on the outside. Log base a of m to the power y. And the way we normally write this, this is actually correct as is, but we don't normally write it this way. So communication is normally, you write this as y log base a of m is equal to log base a. And a lot of times when you see this written, it's written without that extra bracket. Now, one thing I didn't do, and I almost I, I should have gone back and done this. I'll make it clear here because this one is the is the most confusing. These letters can be anything, of course, x's and y's, a's and b's, whatever it is. The important part here to understand is that if you have the logarithm of some value raised to some exponent, you can. There's an equivalent way to write that, which is you can bring the exponent. You can see here. The exponent used to be here, and it got brought down in front as a multiplier instead. And so that's a, actually that's one of the a very useful property from the laws of logarithms. This actually lets you address a lot of problems that are very difficult to do otherwise. Okay, so here is those laws of logarithms in a slightly more standard form in the sense that they're using x's and y's and the base a that we're familiar with rather than m's and n's which are pretty common to use as a substitution but we rarely use those to represent our final forms so there are the three laws of logarithms and we're going to use those to first of all to use each one to answer each of these simple questions and we should be able to do this without a calculator or at the very least do this without using your log button to perform your calculation I just want it simplified without the logarithm being evaluated so your final answer should be left in terms of a logarithm so this first one we have log to the base 3 of 6 plus log to the base 3 of 4.5 and this first one is the uh, product rule so we have we don't have the log of a product we have the sum of two logs but we know that is equivalent to the log of a product so that is the same as log base 3 of 6 multiplied by 4.5 and for the purposes of what we're doing here you could actually stop here that's perfectly good but that is also the same as log base 3 of 6 times 4.5 is 27. And since we're here, and I did mention doing it without a calculator, that is the same as log base 3. And what is 27? 27 is actually 3 to the power 3. And one of the other rules for logarithms that we've looked at is that log base a of a to the x is simply equal to x which is to say that a logarithm and its inverse which is an exponential function undo each other here's a logarithm base 3 here's an exponential base 3 so log base 3 of 3 to the something all we end up with is that something so the final answer to this one is actually 3 without a calculator B, we have log base 2 of 48 minus log base 2 of 3. And this one, we have a difference of logarithms. So I'm going to express that as, so the difference of logarithms is the logarithm of a quotient. Log base 2 of the 
numerator is going to be the first logarithm. The one that I'm subtracting is becoming becomes the denominator. So that's log base 2 of 16. But 16 can be written as a power of 2. It's actually 2 to the power 4. And so using this same property of logarithms, this is equal to just 4. And then finally C, I have log the base 5 of the cube root of 25. So it certainly doesn't look like that's anything we're going to be able to evaluate. The cube root of 25 is awkward. But what we're going to use to do this is right here, the power law. So what do we have? We have, well, we don't have something multiplied in front. Do we have something like this? Well, we do if we write it in a different form. log base 5 and the cube root is the same as 25 to the power 1 third. And now I can take that 1 third and I can bring it in front as a multiplier and so now I end up with 1 third log base 5 of 25 which is the same as 1 third log base 5 of 5 squared. Once again we make use of this incredibly useful property here which is a function and its inverse undo each other. So we end up with 1 third log to the base 5 of 5 to the 2 is simply equal to 2. So we end up with a final answer of 2 thirds. Use the power law to show that log base a of x is log base 10 of x over log base 10 of a. This is the technique I showed you in a previous class about how to evaluate a logarithm. What if your calculator only has a log button, log base 10, as opposed to letting you program any logarithm that you want? And I gave you this formula. I said, well, if you have log base a of x, just take the logarithm of the x, divide that by the logarithm of the other base, and it, and it works out just fine. Now I say, okay, use the power law to show that this is the case. To show that log base a of x is equal to log base 10 of x, log base 10 of a. So if we're going to do that, then we're going to need to, first of all, we're going to make use of some properties of, of logarithms here. So there's a couple of ways that I can approach this, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on that to start. So I'm going to say y equals log base a of x. And if that's the case, then that means that x is equal to a to the power y. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log of both sides and I'm going to take log base 10 of both sides. And if I do that, because whatever I do to one side I can do to the other side, I end up with log base 10 of x is equal to log base 10 of a to the y. And now I'm going to make use of my power law notice I've got log base 10 of a to the power y. So this right side becomes y log base 10 of a. So what I did there is I took this exponent and it got moved to the front. So here it is right here. And the left side doesn't change, log base 10 of x. But what is y equal to? Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave y alone for now. And I'm going to divide both sides by log base 10 of a. So I get log base 10 of x over log base 10 of a. And now I'll ask you, once again, I'll ask you to recall, what is y equal to? y is equal to log base a of x and that's equivalent to log base 10 of x over log base 10 of a which is 
what we started with, which is this original form for evaluating a logarithm if I don't have a calculator button to do this for me. For our final example, we're going to take a look at this compound statement. We've got a few things going on here and we've been asked to rewrite this as a single log to a common base. So the first thing I'm going to deal with here is this one half in front. Now our first instinct might be to try to combine these two, these first two terms together. You might look and say, oh I have addition. But the thing I need you to notice here is that this is one log base a of x. This is one log base a of x. I only have single uh, a multiplier of one in front of each of these. Here I have a multiplier of a half so I can't combine them that way as it stands right now. Instead what I need to do is I'm going to rewrite this as log of 12 plus the log of 7 and I'm going to use my power law to take this r in front, I'm doing it a little differently than before. Now I'm going to move the r that's in front up here. So that becomes 7 to the 1 half minus 2. Sorry, minus 2. Minus log of 2. Now the other thing, and I haven't mentioned it yet, it does say to a common base. And I should point out to you that the common base, because I haven't been writing and I'm not going to continue writing base 10, these are all base 10 because none of these original um, logarithms specify a base. A more complicated problem would have different bases here and you would have to somehow figure out a way to get them all to a common base. And there are ways that, that can be done with very specific questions, but in general that's very difficult to do and you might actually just have to um, well you could use the property we looked at on the previous page but that's it's rare you're going to have to go down that route. Now moving forward from here the next thing I want to talk about here and this is really very important because it's something I still see it's the kind of thing I could see students tripping over and it's it's of all things it's order of operations which seems like a, a kind of a strange thing to be talking about in the context of a fairly advanced high school math lesson like this. Order of operations when you talk about that many many people especially if you're in North America you you'll know this as bed mass or you might know this as ped mass and uh, I've also seen PEMDAS and the important thing about this We've got brackets or parentheses, that's the letter B, the E for exponents. But the thing I want to focus on here is, first of all, there's a bit of a hint here. Notice we've got DM, DM, MD. So the order of this doesn't actually matter. So whether you have division, multiplication, multiplication, division, these are at the same, what I call the same level of precedence. So you do division or multiplication at the same level, you do addition or subtraction at the same level of precedence. And I'll even put in quotes there, they're the same level. Now if they're at the same level then you what you do is you evaluate from left to right and that's an important extra piece of information to consider. And what that means is that when we come back up here it answers the question about whether or not I should do this first or whether I should do this first. And it's actually quite important that we do this part first and then we do this second. And really the way I'm denoting this maybe that's not the best the way I should show this is my order of operations say that I need to do this plus first and then I need to do this minus second. And yes, I understand that in general you're going to do this left to right anyway. We read English from left to right. But there might be a situation where it might actually be tempting 
to do things out of that order and a lot of times you can get away with that but there are certain circumstances where if you attempt to do that then you're actually going to make a mess of things so in this case I'm going to caution you in advance we have to do this this is not just I happen to be doing it in the order that I'm seeing it I must do this addition first and then the subtraction and the reason is what if I had something like 1 minus 2 minus 10 now this is a pretty glaring example but what I'm showing here is if I choose to do this in the other order, if I do this first and then I do this second, this becomes 1 minus, and 2 minus 10 is negative 8. And 1 minus neg negative 8 is equal to positive 9. Whereas, if I were to do this one first and this one second as I'm supposed to, that becomes 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 10 and this whole thing is equal to negative 11. Those are very different answers. And it turns out this one is correct and this one is completely wrong. So the order of operations, it does matter even when you're talking about the order of operations at the same level. So in this case, we're talking about the order of operations for addition and subtraction. So now without with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and finish this off. Log base 10 of 12 plus log base 10 of seven to the one half is log base 10 I'm going to drop the base 10 it's understood and that's going to be 12 multiplied by and instead of 7 to the 1 half I'm going to rewrite that as the square root of 7 7 to the power 1 half is square root of 7 minus log and I'm going to drop the base 10 of 2 now I have a single log minus another log and I can use my quotient law for this so this becomes the log of, and the whole expression becomes 12 root 7 over 2, which I can then finish by simplifying. I notice that I have 12 and 2 have a common factor of 2. So 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there 6 times, and I end up with my answer is just 6 root 7 over 1. I won't write over 1, 6 root 7 which you might actually just write as the log of 6 root 7 without the brackets. Um, I'm okay with doing that. That's okay. I, generally, if I, have, if I have anything that's not a completely trivial term in the logarithm, I normally will actually put it in brackets, but that's a, that's a style choice. That's not really super important. Okay, so that's it. Keep in mind those order of operations. Just think about that and maybe other places where you're maybe not thinking of it really clearly. And I believe that's our last example. So here you go for your assigned work for this lesson.